In this first video, I'm going to present introductory concepts of petroleum and energy geomechanics, and I'm going to tell you why you should be interested in learning petroleum and energy geomechanics. So we're going to start with chapter number one. This is a fairly short chapter. And in this chapter, we're going to see the main motivations of energy uh, geomechanics. Basically here, what we want to solve are problems related to the mechanics of the shallow lithosphere. That is within the first more or less 10 kilometers of depth. That's where we find energy resources that we can take advantage of. Like for example, hydrocarbon resources or thermal resources. In order to take advantage of those resources, we have to go through exploration, drilling and completion, production, and many times also take care of the waste generated during the process of producing uh, such energy, like for example, waste water injection. In all of these stages, we find contributions of geomechanics. For example, in exploration, the contribution of geomechanics is in understanding vaulted structures through elastic waves, uh, compressive waves and shear waves. In drilling, it, the application is a little bit more obvious in wellbore stability, but it's also very important for completion, now using hydraulic fracturing. It's also very important that during the stage of production, we take care of the geomechanics of the reservoir in order to avoid, for example, sand production or significantly reservoir compaction and induce subsidence. And sometimes when we take care of uh, the generated waste, if we're not very careful enough, we could produce some uh, undesired consequences, like for example, induce uh, micro seismicity or seismicity. Here you have a figure that summarizes many of these processes. As I was telling you before, uh, geomechanics is in almost all phases of petroleum engineering. And uh, that's something that we're going to see through this class, how you can apply the concepts, concepts of geomechanics to all these stages. First of all, let's talk about structural geology. Geomechanics plays a very important role in structural geology because structural geology is what helps us understand where our reservoirs are and what are the mechanical and fluid conditions in those reservoirs. If you want to drill a wellbore in such location or do a hydraulic fracture stimulation in such locations, we need to understand what are the initial conditions, and not only about the pore pressure, but also about stresses. The structural geology uh, helps us understand those conditions. And in this picture, what you see is the influence of the tectonic plates in the in situ state of stress. As uh, you may imagine, the movement of the tectonic plates not only causes for example, earthquakes, but also causes variation in the state of stress in the shallow lithosphere. We're going to see how those variations uh, add, modify the state of stress in the subsurface, modify the direction of horizontal stresses, and also modify the magnitude of those horizontal stresses. We're going to see that horizontal stresses are a fundamental component in order to predict hydraulic fracture propagation. And the movement of those tectonic plates is also responsible for folding and faulting of uh, geological layers, as you can see here in this seismic image, where you see very clearly an anticline structure. And close to the crest of that anticline structure, we see uh, faults. Here I have another example of a fault this is something that we're going to be looking through this course. What is important importance of faults in reservoir geomechanics? And this is an outcrop, but you should understand that the same features happen in the subsurface. 
here I have another image from a seismic uh, image interpretation that shows very nicely how these faults are present in many of the places in which we drill well bores and we uh, target reservoirs of hydrocarbons. So, the structural geology is the first component. Reservoir geomechanics and in general geomechanics is also very important for understanding drilling and well bore stability. 150 years ago, we could barely drill a shallow and vertical well bore. But today, thanks to the advances in technology in drilling and also to the improve, improved knowledge in geomechanics, we can drill extended reach lateral uh, well bores, which are very deep in, in, very, uh, in locations where also the water depth is very high. The technology that we have today, of course, it's a lot better than we had before. And uh, in order to understand how we can drill some of these well bores, we're going to revisit the equations of well bore stability and the mechanical stability of boreholes. This is going to be beyond what you learn in, uh, in drilling with simple equations of what is a fracture gradient. We're going to explore new equations that allow us to predict more accurately when a wellbore is going to be stable and when a wellbore is not stable, either in vertical direction or in inclined conditions. Another very important part of reservoir geomechanics is wellbore completion and particularly hydraulic fracturing. Thanks to hydraulic fracturing, now we have access to many hydrocarbon bare informations that we didn't have that much access to, especially in terms of production rates. Now, thanks to hydraulic fracturing, uh, we can produce uh, oil and gas from geological formations with a very low permeability. The main adva advantage of reservoir uh, geomechanics is that with hydraulic fracturing we can modify the permeability of a reservoir. So this is not a constant value anymore. We used to think about the reservoir and a given permeability, but thanks to hydraulic fracturing we can modify that and obtain an effective permeability which is higher than the original and that allows us to have higher production rates. This is going to be a big component of this class and we're going to be talking about hydraulic fracturing throughout the entire course. Just to give you uh, an example about the importance of hydraulic fracturing in petroleum engineering uh, today, let me show you a few examples. Uh, first of all, I, I show you the data. Think for a minute, what are the biggest oil producers in the United States. So you may think, you know, right away about the majors. You may think about Exxon. You may think about uh, Shell. You may also think about Chevron, right? We all know those. Probably you have already done internship for those. But recently in the last 20 years, we have seen the emergence of new companies. These companies are based mostly on unconventionals. And here now at the top of the table, we see Chevron, ExxonMobil, as we were saying before, but now we have EOG resources. We have Pioneer Natural Resources over here too. And these new companies are mostly based on unconventionals. Unconventional oil and gas production which is possible only through hydraulic fracturing. Many of you are going to be working in hydraulic fracturing and unconventionals in the future, especially if you stay in the USA. I have been working with a student that took this class last semester in order to put together data about oil and gas production in Texas. And this animation shows very nicely uh, those results. Here what we see, it's an animation of oil and gas production. And let me pause it uh, somewhere over here. All right. 
and what we see is that in the year 2011 and after 2010 mostly we see the emergence of oil and gas production in counties where most of the unconventional activity is for example in oil that will be in the permian basin and in the eagle ford shale and for gas we see quite a bit also in the permian but also in uh, eagle ford and also in the barnett shale all of this is because unconventionals hydraulic fracturing is also very important for other activities don't think that it is just important for uh, oil and gas recently the department of energy has started to uh, fund activity on deep geothermal energy some of you also are going to be working on this in the future on commercial geothermal energy production and one of the modalities of geothermal energy is through enhanced geothermal system that require the use of hydraulic fracturing in order to connect a well that pumps cold water into a hull formation so it connects to wells that will retrieve that hot water into a power plant and that uh, power plant will convert that thermal energy into electricity you may think this is far away from now but it's, it's not that much uh, currently in utah there is a project in which this is being done and hopefully in the future this is going to be taken into a commercial scale geomechanics is very important in order to understand the implications of changes of temperature in such formations and also as i was telling you before to connect these wellbores through hydraulic fracturing all right so let's come back uh, over here after we drill a wellbore and we complete it it's also very important to keep an eye on what is called reservoir geomechanics what are the changes in stresses when you change the pore pressure in the reservoir because you are producing a fluid when you produce a fluid the reservoir pressure goes down and that brings along some other consequences some of which are not good like for example excessive compaction of the of the reservoir excessive compaction of the reservoir many times ca can cause a loss in permeability because your porosity gets lower your permeability gets lower also that can produce a casing buckling of your uh, production casing in case this deformation is too much and if that deformation also propagates through the surface or through nearby formations it can produce a shearing of casing which is nearby and also big subsidence on the top and you should not underestimate these effects because some of these can uh, produce induced seismicity and sometimes also they can produce a huge subsidence this is one example in long beach california in the beginning of the 20th century when oil was starting to get produced in long beach california uh, here you can see let me show you some old pictures this is what long beach california looked uh, 100 years ago and when they started to produce uh, oil at an excessive rate in which the pore pressure was going down too much they observed significant subsidence which means that the ground was going down and water was getting into uh into the into the into the surface which uh, actually everything was getting flooded and they observed in this region subsidence or a decrease in the ground surface of up to 26 feet and 26 feet is quite a bit now this is controlled and what they do is they pump water in order to maintain a constant pressure but they still continue producing and if you ever go to long beach i strongly encourage that when you go to the beach you try to identify these structures over here which are the ones that you see here on the picture on the right you can see them from the from the beach and they look like uh, like some islands with some uh, funny looking buildings but these are actually uh, facilities for oil production and water injection all right 
I think this is uh, everything I have about the introduction for uh, reservoir geomechanics. Again, I encourage that uh, you learn reservoir geomechanics because many of you are going to be working in these problems. Reservoirs are becoming more and more problematic each day and geomechanics is getting more and more important in order to solve to solve the problems uh, related to those reservoirs. Here uh, is the problems which are assigned for this first introduction, and they are mostly related about the impact of hydraulic fracturing on production of oil and gas in the USA. And what we're going to do, and you can start doing, is check these two links, which I have opened over here. They will allow you to find and to download uh, two reports and you're going to have to use the data from those reports to answer these two questions which are related to the increase in gas production in, in the US and the increase in light tidal oil production in the US in order to really understand what it has been the impact of unconventional in the last 10 years. <laughs> 